toxic relationship changes you. Why all relationships are important, even the ones that cause a lot of pain, cause a lot of drama, they all have something to teach us. Humans just really aren't meant to be loners. We're meant to have connections with other people. We crave that interaction no matter how introverted we are. We do need some sort of human intimacy in our lives. That's just the way of the human condition. Relationships are arguably one of the most important parts of the human experience. I mean, I can't really think of anything else besides internal self-reflection that is as important to your spiritual growth as human relationships. They have been since the dawn of our existence. We've relied on other people. We've always been pack animals and that will continue and it has never really left us. So that will continue on as we continue to evolve and ascend. When we have strong, healthy relationships, we feel supported and unconditionally loved. And when we feel those things, we thrive and we're able to give that emotion back in return to the people who also unconditionally love us. But when our relationships are bad and toxic or abusive, we feel insignificant and unworthy of love. And we're likely to continue repeating that pattern over and over again until we're kind of done working through that cycle by taking deliberate healing actions. And we're going to talk about that a little bit more in this podcast episode. So whether a relationship is good or bad or toxic or whatever, there is always going to help form our individual worldview, whether that is for better or for worse. So just keep that in mind as you are continuously going through the world of relationships. This is especially true for relationships we have early on in life. The people we surround ourselves with teach us so much. Likewise, we are always teaching them too. So this is the divine intention of our human connections. It is to learn and to teach. We usually don't do this consciously. That is just the nature of any human relationship. But a lot of the times we recognize the fact that we're learning a lot from these people, especially if it's a good relationship. We understand that we're being inspired by them, that they're showing us these things. It's a lot harder to see this in the midst of a toxic relationship, it's much easier to see that in hindsight. But regardless, it is still happening. We incarnate here on Earth during this time for the purpose of growth and learning and healing. And we are very careful to map out our relationships before we actually arrive. We kind of make our own soul plan before we get here over who's going to do what and play what role and what we're going to be like and all these sorts of things. And of course, we have free will, but for the most part, our paths and our interactions are planned out beforehand with the goal and the intention of contributing to our healing and our evolution in some way. So that means that every person we've ever known, especially the toxic ones, were destined to appear in our lives at the exact moment that they did and also exit our lives at the exact moment that they did. So when we become involved with someone who is horribly toxic, we are presented with nearly endless opportunities to evolve and to grow and to learn from them. Even if it's an absolute horrible relationship, there's a lot of abuse involved, we can still understand that there is something that they have to teach us. So let's talk quickly about the signs of a toxic relationship. Now, I want to preface this with, the, this with that I am not a therapist or a counselor or a psychologist or anything. I've just had my fair share of toxic relationships. I've known a lot of people and I have done research on this sort of thing. And it's something that I feel like everyone can really relate to. Anyone who's had a bad relationship, not just romantic, but any sort of bad relationship can speak to these sort of things. And sometimes you just kind of need to hear it from someone who's not talking to you as if you're a clinical study. Not that that's a bad thing all the time, but sometimes it's just easier to talk more human to human. So um, in my experience, there are some telltale signs of a toxic slash emotionally abusive relationship. When people in a relationship of any kind are repeatedly competitive, undermining, and disrespecting one another, it is toxic. This can either be one-sided or both of people can be doing that to each other. Um, they can also be possessive, jealous, dominant, manipulative, controlling, aggressive, standoffish, and or purposefully withholding affection, using a lot of ultimatums, um, making you feel as though you need to behave in a certain way, uh, these sorts of things. Usually if you're questioning 
whether or not this relationship is toxic, it probably is. Because if it wasn't, you wouldn't be like, is this person a bad influence on me? Because if they were a good influence, you would know that they were a good influence. Like you're very rarely completely blind to a toxic relationship. You might be in the very early beginning stages and like the wooing phases, but eventually you're going to start to realize that every single time I'm around this person, I hate myself or I feel so small or I can't approach them or I can't be myself. Uh, that is a tall tale sign of a toxic relationship. And any relationship that makes you feel less is not a good one to be in. Both of you should understand the needs and the wants of the other person and be eager to fill those needs and those wants. And if that doesn't exist, it, it just, the relationship will never succeed. It doesn't matter how long you've known the person or how you know the person, any relationship you could have could potentially be toxic or become toxic over time. Even the relationships that appear to be insignificant can have a lasting impression. And this goes with good relationships too. Like you could have you know, someone in your life for only a couple of weeks and they change your life forever, whether that's in a really wonderful, inspiring kind of way or in a really horrible, toxic kind of way, that's just kind of the nature of relationships. But today we're focusing mainly on toxic relationships because those tend to be emotionally taxing. And in my opinion, they have the most to teach you. And we're going to talk about why here shortly. So my all time favorite mantra is as above, so below, as within, so without. And I take this to heart and I like to think about this mantra whenever I am kind of going, oh, why is this happening? Woe is me. I don't understand this. What is the point of this? Then I have to go back and remember as above, so below, meaning that everything above us, all the stars and all the planets and all the energy above us is also below us here on earth is how I take that. So we are heaven on earth, essentially. And as within, so without, that to me is simply stating that the world as we perceive it is a reflection of our world. So our outer world is a reflection of our inner world. Everyone is kind of a mirror. Things that we don't like about certain people are probably things we don't like about ourselves. And this is talked about a lot in the spiritual community because it's kind of a huge revelation to have when you realize that, you know, every single time I meet someone who's really, really confident, I, I hate them and they make me crazy. I can't stand them. Oh, it's because I'm, I'm jealous or, or I don't have that confidence or every single time I meet someone who is really arrogant or they really are kind of a know-it-all. Maybe that's something in yourself that you know about yourself, but you aren't really proud of these sorts of things. I hope that makes sense. So this means that all the relationships we cultivate with other people will always echo the relationship we have with ourselves, not only what is going on within our inner world, but how we view ourselves. Therefore, our toxic relationships kind of put the spotlight on certain personality traits that are hindering our personal and spiritual growth. It can be really difficult for some people to not only realize this, but then deal with it without placing blame or feeling like they're a victim. But the thing about victimhood is that it's a mindset. So yes, you can't always control things that happen to you. And yes, you can't control how people react to you or how they are towards you. But what you can control is how you choose to view that and put frame it in your mind. So while you couldn't control someone, you know, being verbally abusive to you, you can look at it either saying like, oh my God, I can't believe that happened to me. Everyone's always so mean to me. But then you are giving away all your power to all these other people when an alternative point of view would be, wow, I am attracting a lot of people who aren't nice to me. Why is that? Am I not nice to myself? Am I constantly putting myself down? And now these people are reflecting what's going on inside of me. That is really hard to come to terms with. And I could probably do a whole podcast episode on victimhood. Maybe I should because that topic come is huge and there's a lot of talk that needs to go around blame and what it means to actually be a victim and this sort of thing. So maybe stay tuned for that. If that's something that you're interested in, please let me know. I would love to do that sort of an episode if it would actually help people in changing that victimhood mindset. Because in this podcast episode, I want to focus mainly on understanding that a toxic or a bad relationship is here for a reason to show you something. And that thing that it's showing you is something that's going on within your inner world. That's the point of today's podcast episode. I don't want to go too far down the victimhood and blame rabbit hole. We'll save that for another time because it is it's a similar topic. Unfortunately, it can be really hard to end a relationship 
relationship of any kind, especially if it's someone that you're tied to via family or maybe marriage, or maybe you just kind of feel like you owe them things. It's very rare that a na- uh, toxic relationship will just kind of end naturally and seamlessly. Sometimes they do. Sometimes the people just exit and you're like, oh, thank God that person's gone forever. And now it feels a lot lighter and you're able to kind of more quickly and easily reflect. But people like parents, spouses, siblings, even aunts, uncles, cousins, grandmas, grandpas, these sorts of people are a lot harder to, to let go of. And spiritually speaking, that means that their lesson is something that is really, really important to you right now in this life. More often than not, you're going to have to take some significant steps and make some major life changes to remove the toxicity from your life. And this is something that is imperative. Anyone who's gone through a major life change that affects all areas of your life is going to tell you that you need to declutter your life of negative people, of people that no longer resonate with you, or people who are creating a circumstance within your energy field that is not what you want. Your mental health truly is invaluable. And if anyone ever dares to try to taint it in any way towards you, they do not deserve to be in your life. No matter how they are related to you or how what your relationship is with them, you do not have to put up with that stuff. I might feel like, oh, but this, but this reason, but this. No, no matter who the person is, no matter how they're related to you or why your lives are intertwined so deeply, you do not have to put up with their stuff. And if you truly feel like there's an obstacle in the way that is making it so that you have to interact with them in some way, make it as little as possible and also come up with some sort of defense protective mechanism to protect your energy and your own mental health and the state of your well-being when you are forced to be around that person. But I truly believe no matter who the person is and how they're related to you, they are not entitled to treat you in a bad way and you are not owing them anything, even if they're a family member or a child or a parent or whoever. You don't, you're not obligated to put up with their toxicity just because of your relationship with them. That's kind of a hard topic to discuss with people because they feel as though they owe people things or maybe because their circumstance is different. Oh, I can't let go of this toxic person because of this reason or the next reason or whatever. But in the end, it it needs to happen in one way, shape or form. I was recently talking to a really nice lady and she was asking about how do I remove a toxic person from my life. And this is kind of what inspired this episode a little bit, actually. I was like, well, in order to remove a toxic person from your life, you just go cold turkey is the easiest way, I think, is to just say, nope, we're done. Be bold and be brave and be like, I'm done with you and then cut off all communication. Obviously, that's a little idealistic because not everyone can do that so quickly. But you do need to take steps to slowly move them out of your life if that's a little bit easier. And I was kind of just giving her pointers on how to do that. And eventually she said, well, I can't not ever see this person again because they're the father of my children and he's my ex, but we share two children and they still see him and he's still really toxic and really horrible. And I was like, okay, well then you need to limit your communication as often as possible because that is what's going to keep you most sane and keep that toxicity out of your life. And then I pointed out to her that if he truly is that toxic and if he really is having that big of an impact, that it's they were not really doing the kids any favors by keeping him in their life. And her kids were a little older. They were young teenagers. They're old enough to understand that this person is not good, that they're not feeling good when they're around them. It might be better off for everyone to just kind of step back and and take some space. I'm not saying that you need to cut them out permanently. That's another important factor. So it doesn't need to be permanent if you're able to learn and heal and improve the relationship and move on. But eventually she was like, yeah, I guess I could kind of figure out how my kids feel, maybe start seeing him less and less. And eventually it will come out to that anyway, as the child continues to grow they will probably eventually make that choice on their own. So uh, this lady's story is a really common one where a lot of people share children with a toxic person and they can't just tell them that, no, you can't see their kid. Um, Or maybe the kid doesn't want to stop seeing them for whatever reason, but that doesn't mean that you have to allow them into your energy field. I hope that resonates with at least somebody out there listening um, because this is really common. Uh, Parents are very similar where I can't just you know, stop talking to my dad because he's really toxic and I feel horrible when I'm around him, my family will throw a fit. But I'm sure there's at least someone in your life, at least one other person that will support 
what it is that you're trying to do. I think about the example of Ariel Winter. She is an actress. If you're familiar with Modern Family, she plays Alex on that show. Um, her mother was famously toxic. And I don't know all the details. This happened a long time ago when um, Ariel was a little young and that show was on forever and it just ended. But this was happening a while ago. Um, her mother would come on to set with her every single time, every, every time they were shooting. And it was always her putting her down emotionally. And she was causing a lot of um, eating disorders in Ariel. And she was really just being horribly, horribly toxic to the point where the staff of the show got her removed and banned from the, sh from the set so that she couldn't come on anymore. And eventually Ariel made the choice as an adult to be cut off from her mom. She does not communicate with her mother anymore. I mean, I don't keep up with celebrities, but last time I checked, she's not in communication with her mother anymore. And her brother did not support her. And her brother stood on the side of her mom saying like, how could you ever, you know, cut off your mother like that? It's your mother. You owe her so much or whatever nonsense he tried to manipulate her with. But it's clear to me that as an outsider looking in that Ariel Winter is clearly a lot better off without her mother. I mean, she's healthier looking. She seems happier. She's gotten a lot of consistent work over the years. So um, even though it must have been really hard for her to make the choice to not see her mom anymore, and even though her brother wasn't supportive, in the end, it worked out. And who knows, maybe one day they'll be reunited. Maybe other times they won't. That's just something to keep in mind that even if it's a close family member, it's not like you're obligated to put up with their toxicity. And that can be really hard to come to terms with. So I want to talk a little bit more about what it actually takes to finally end a toxic relationship. So I gave the example of the lovely woman who shares kids with a toxic person and the example of Ariel Winter um, deciding to cut ties with her mom. I want to go through the steps that you can actually do as well to make those sorts of things happen. Because in the end, you'll be so much happier and you'll be glad that you did. And like I said, maybe one day you will find the relationship is improved and healed and you can move on. I wouldn't hold your breath. It doesn't always happen, but you never know what might happen. So the first step to cutting ties with a toxic person and ending a toxic relationship is recognizing your responsibility in the matter. This kind of goes back to victimhood, why I might do an entire episode on just the victimhood mindset, because no one is 100% innocent. And yes, you can't always control what other people are doing and saying to you, but there was a role that you played in this relationship. Like really, this relationship isn't one-sided. So there were things that you had contributed that ultimately led to this point where you are starting to cut ties with this person. And it's really important to recognize that responsibility, but to not blame yourself. I think that's the really the key factor is to not blame yourself because blaming and pointing fingers even to yourself does nothing. It makes the situation not any better. It's counterproductive. All we're doing is understanding what we contributed to it becoming toxic and saying, yep, that was me. That was me right there. And now I'm going to take steps to improve it. What we're trying to do here is level the playing field so that we realize that our inner world is being reflected in our outer world via our toxic relationships. And this will ultimately become our secret weapon because when we can blamelessly see what it is, is that is being reflected into our inner world, we can take charge and take our power back and make it better. So the next thing that is really important for you to do when you're trying to end a toxic relationship is finding positive social support somewhere else. In the example of Ariel Winter that I gave, her brother was not that emotional support. However, all of her coworkers and her bosses on set of Modern Family were. They recognized, hey, she is treating you like crap and you are clearly not doing well mentally because of the way she's treating you. And this is something that we all need from somebody in order to have the strength really to remove ourselves from the toxic relationship. I mean, you don't necessarily need it, I guess. I mean, there are people who do escape eventually, uh, but that is not necessarily ideal, I don't think, because like I stated in the beginning that we are social creatures and we need people in our lives and we need that connection. Um, so if we are able to find support for ending our toxic relationship outside of the toxic relationship, it will really be empowering. Very similar to taking responsibility for your contributions, having somebody say, yes, absolutely, I'm there for you. If you need anything, cut ties with that person is also extremely powerful. So the next step would be 
to be as objective as you can towards the relationship. You want to take a step back and look at it from the point of view of a stranger. What is really going on here? What's the dynamic like? Is there an equal amount of give and take? What is happening? Where are their mutual benefits? Answering these sorts of questions will make it a lot easier to let go and move on and to also recognize what it is that you're uh, supposed to be learning from this relationship and maybe how you can improve future relationships. Now, this step is really simple, but it is probably going to take the longest and it's also hard. It can be really hard to be like, what's the dynamic like? And to realize that, you know, you're kind of on the receiving end of a big bully. And it might be a little hard to come to terms with, but in the end, again, you will be better off and you just have to give yourself the space and the power to do so. And the social support will really help with that too. Cause you can always ask them if you're willing for that, willing to have that conversation with somebody like, Hey, what do you think about our relationship? What do you see when you see us? Sometimes people will volunteer this information. And when you're at this stage, you should just try to take it as best you can and make sure you are trying to be as open to receiving this information as you can. Because remember, you're cutting ties with this toxic person. You don't want to be with them anymore. So what other people are saying isn't something you probably don't already know. And this next one is a lot easier said than done, but I'm going to say it anyway. And it's learn your lessons. The whole goal of this podcast episode is to help you realize that toxic relationships exist for the sake of growth and learning on a spiritual soul level. Every situation is totally unique, obviously. So you'll really want to dig deep and think about what lesson the universe is wanting you to figure out here. What was the point of this transaction in an emotional way that your soul set up before it came here? Only you can truly know that, but once you do figure it out, you can break the cycle of toxicity and start having more healthy relationships. So now that you're free of the cycle and you're ready to start building more healthy relationships, the next thing you want to do is realize what your emotional needs are and kind of piggybacking off of that is communicating those emotional needs to your new relationships. Chances are this toxic relationship has highlighted areas of your life that are really lacking in fulfillment, either in certain areas of your life, you know, the basics, career, family, whatever, but also within you, like what is it that you actually need to be fulfilled and satisfied in a relationship? And this is especially true if you realize that you have more than one toxic relationship that is really similar to another one. Like if you're constantly in a cycle of people refusing and rejecting you for, you know, physical touch and physical love, and that's how you feel loved, then that's something that you should explore a little bit more because that cycle is going to keep happening unless you're able to kind of figure it out and able to communicate those emotional needs right from the get go. So just kind of ask yourself, what is it that you need from a relationship in order to feel safe and secure? Once you've answered that question for yourself, really just communicate it with whomever it pertains to. And that's especially true in romantic relationships. Um, You don't necessarily need to sit your best friend down and say, I need this, that next thing from you. I mean, you can, I mean, there's a good chance that they'll be fine and reciprocate and do what needs to be done because they care about you. But this is especially true in a romantic relationship because in an intimate monogamous relationship, having your needs met is vital to its success. And Open communication is really the only way to ensure that you're doing all you can to make those needs get met. The last thing here is something that I've talked about before on this podcast episode, but it is forgiveness. Forgive them and yourselves. Forgiveness is the ultimate form of love. It is not about justifying behavior and it's not pretending like nothing ever happened. Forgiveness is about making the choice to release pain from the past so it's no longer affecting you today. Again, forgiveness is never about justifying behavior. It's allowing yourself the opportunity to no longer be affected by what happened. Refusing to forgive is toxic to yourself. It's really something that is painful. It's something that is not doing you any good. Um, And even if you go, I will never forgive you for this. I mean, silently, you should forgive because that resentment is going to begin to fester and is probably eventually going to cause a lot of disease in the body, dis-ease and possibly maybe even disease, but more emotional stress and emotional trauma. If you got cheated on and you were heartbroken, you'll never forgive them for that. Not only will you likely be cheated on again in the future, but you're never going to be trustworthy. You're never going to be able to leave it in the past. Forgiveness is everything. And I have an entire blog post about why forgiveness is so, so important. 
And I really encourage you to please go and read it if this is something that you're struggling with. And maybe this is another episode that I will dive deeper into because I firmly believe that forgiveness is the most powerful thing you could ever bestow upon yourself and even to somebody else too. Another resource that you can look into for learning how to forgive is Louise Hay's book, You Can Heal Your Life. A good amount of that book is talking about how important forgiveness is. So please know that it is there for you and that you just have to figure out how to do it. And it's really important for healing. Painful relationships are just a part of life. We cannot avoid them and we shouldn't want to avoid them either. Being intimate and vulnerable with another person really has its positives, but it also has its negatives. Like everything in life, everything in the universe has yin-yang energy. But in the end, all those diverse experiences are what make us feel alive and a part of something bigger than ourselves. And they're all part of the earth school lessons that we came here to learn in this life. And when we transition to non-earth schools, when we move to the other side at some point in time, we're going to reflect on all these things and realize how much it is that we've actually learned. And we're going to continue learning once we're on the other side. So it's all about experience and growth. There is nothing shameful about having had toxic relationships. Even if you were part of the reason why it was toxic and you weren't totally just laying back and letting it happen to you, you were also being toxic back. There's no shame in that. That's why forgiveness is so important. Ending a toxic relationship takes a lot of courage. And if you are courageous enough to end a toxic relationship, then you deserve a pat on the back. (laughs) We all have a few of these in our lifetime, maybe more than a few, depending on your circumstances and your scenarios and all these things but they all do have invaluable things to teach us. And likewise, we are teaching those other people too. So a lot of this podcast episode was kind of one-sided, like what is it, what is it trying to show you? What is it that you're looking to learn as a soul, all these things, but we can't forget that we're also influencing the other person. And there's a chance that once the toxic relationship is over, that the other person's going to be like, wow, that, that was something big. I need to sit down and let that soak in and realize what was happening. There's a good chance that will happen, even if they're not going to vocalize it or ever really make it clear that that's what's happening. It might happen once they've reached the other side. But regardless, these relationships are there to teach us and to help us grow. I really hope this has been helpful and I hope you have been able to kind of recognize the warning signs about what is toxic. If you find yourself amidst a toxic situation right now, maybe you kind of have a little bit more idea and some tools about what it is that you can do for yourself to make it different. And I would really love to hear about your own experiences and maybe some lessons you've learned throughout some toxic relationships. You can either email me at sarahray at spirituallyinspired.co or you can leave a comment on YouTube. You can message me on Instagram or leave a comment on Instagram. I would love to hear from you if you're willing to share. And if you are willing to share, thanks in advance. I know it's hard, but we're all here to support each other and we can be the social support system if you need help leaving a toxic relationship. Just reach out and ask. 